1966 Sears solid state slash transistorized portable black and white television. This is uh, probably what a nine inch. This is back in that transitional state where they were trying to sell solid state to the public. Maybe, maybe transistorized was a, didn't go over too well because things started as transistorized and they changed it to solid state. So this is both solid state and transistorized. So this is a really special TV set. And maybe a little warning disclaimer here. This thing is filthy, so if you have a are bothered by dirt, you might not want to watch this one. Anyway, 1966. So this is really early solid state germanium transistor, of course. So probably going to be capacitor issues and transistor issues and Sears, which is almost a dead brick and mortar store. I've already popped the back off of it, and I believe this, well, this is a Toshiba belt, built set. This thing was built by Toshiba. It says Toshiba right on the yoke, and I've been checking it out. Looks like it's 12 and 110. It uses this weird Sears connector. And I even... When I was at my local electronics store, I even picked up an extra horizontal output transistor just because, well, they're getting scarce and it's an, basically an NTE uh, 127 PNP germanium horizontal vertical deflection power amp and uh, it's a 350 volt 10 amp germanium. So, and these aren't cheap by the way, but I just grabbed it because I've always wanted one of these TVs to see it work at least. We'll take a look on the inside. It's kind of built like a early Japanese transistor pocket radio with a lot more metal. So lots of crappy early electrolytic capacitors. These kind of yellowish um, ones with the negative indicator on top it's Toshiba There's quite a bit packed in this little thing. Probably nowhere near the quality of the Sony at the time, but I thought this would be cool to make working again. I guess the first thing we should do is test the CRT. I believe the Super Mac will do this. And then let's just put power to it and see what it does. All the all the circuit boards look like they, they have plugs on them. Let's see, that one's got a plug on it there, got a plug up here. So, for easy disassembly, got some fuses there. That looks kind of butchered. I wonder if that transistor's been replaced. No, it's a Toshiba part. I wonder if that's the damper diode right there. So this had a battery pack, rechargeable battery pack that came with it. So this is one of those deals you could take to the beach with you. Yeah, let's take our black and white TV to the beach. Get our propaganda injection while we watch the waves roll in. 280db4. I guess that's 280 millimeters. What is 280 millimeters in inches? 
280 millimeters equal 11.024 inches. Really? 280 DB4. Make sure I get this right. 12.6 volts, C and 5. So it's this little Hoagie Beimler right here, little micro socket. Got to be very careful with this. But yeah, these had 12 volt filaments so they could just run them directly off the uh, battery. Right, well, it appears to be glowing. I guess that's the first positive thing we got. I'm not quite at 12 volts, but... Ooh, good cutoff. Excellent CRT. Goody. Hey, the speaker's a little crusty. You know, I, unfortunately, this is almost like a barn find. And, um, I got the cabinet, which, like I say, I took off so that we could just have a look in the inside. But I don't have these little knobs, which I wish I had it complete. I could probably find one of these off eBay, but who knows how many thousands of dollars they'd want for it just because it's from the 60s and it's Amos and Andy era, George Jetson, Atomic era, Esquivel approved. Uh, this has, I believe this uses the three little tubes as the tripler. Which it does, this is like the Sony. It uses these little 1DK29. I'm tempted to pop this off just so we can have a look at those. Here you go, just to kind of play show and tell. So this is a very early tripler. And you can see the little tiny micro bulbs there. And the little tiny flyback. These don't go bad. Look at the look at the st stacked windings for the filaments on these one volt tubes. There's three individual windings for the three tubes. Isn't that cool? A tube tripler from the 60s. And yes, the little Sony micro TVs did use this exact same thing. Although I believe it was even packed into a smaller uh, compartment. So that's that's cool. So it does have three little tubes in it. With the picture tube, it's a four tube set. The suicide cord is in place. Uh, here we go. Let's get this over to watts. Amps, watts. That's what we care about. Power. Real power, not current. Uh, and here we go. I heard a little sizzle sizzle there. Okay, I'm going to hit the power switch. Eleven watts, twelve watts. and total silence. Ooh. But not rasterless. Interesting. Fourteen watts. There's our brightness. Huh, so just stem. Okay, so that's a good start. And at least we have high voltage. This, it's interesting that this was removed. Um, I wonder if the reason why this thing was given up on is because it didn't have any sound. I don't need this. I'm never going to sit down and watch this thing with headphones. 
So let's get a nice dial in here of this. Sears solid state transistorized. Notice how solid state is all in capital letters and transistorized is in lowercase. I wonder what that's about. I would absolutely suspect or expect this thing to need a complete recapping, but we're not going to just engage in that kind of gross assumption here. We're going to actually diagnose the thing and find out, you know, why, why, why is it not doing whatever it's not doing, which initially I don't hear any sound, but also I was rotating the tuner and I didn't see any flicker in the picture. Okay, well the speaker's wide open, which there's kind of no surprise there. I'm also, I'm looking at the circuit. And, uh, so basically we want to go, we want to, yeah, at 50 microfarad there could be open too. It uses push-pull audio out with a driver transformer, an interstage transformer. So we want to try and go from right there, that point, point 0.5, to ground and see if we have any audio but this this thing is just dead not no surprise there by the way if you're triggered by this lovely dirty carpet this is a actual television service table that's on four wheels that came out of a TV shop that went out of business. This is, was a commercially available thing. See me stroking, it's making the dog across the street bark, which is kind of cool. So yeah, if, if you're offended by the carpet or turned on by it, yeah, let me know. But this is a fully legitimate television service uh, table that was, like I say, available. To the television service industry so it's it's legit it's not something I made anyway uh, back to reality so yeah um, could be capacitors but not entirely likely Obviously the audio is working, the deflection's working, the high voltage is working, but we're not getting any RF. And this right here would be the IF board. So I guess the next step would be to try feeding our signal generator, our uh, test pattern generator, into the IF and see if the tuner's dead or if the IF is dead. So I think... The IF input is right there. Connector 1, right there, that's the IF input. Yeah. So I think we should go back to this for a minute. Because this is quite sensual and I think it'll bring about good luck with this television. So, very plush. Alright, I have this on uh, 45.75 IF. I have the IF driven into where I showed you. Contact. Ooh, that sounds good. Well, sort of working. Uh, vertical and horizontals way off, but oh, audio's working. Trying to find the horizontal frequency, and this thing is pointing right there. I don't see anything there. What are they talking about? I, I know this is blanking. I apologize, but 
I, I got it on channel four and I've twerko corculated with the tuner. I think the tuner is just dirty, but I cannot find the horizontal hold control. This right here is horizontal frequency. This right here is horizontal hold. It's not doing anything when I turn it. So I'm gonna give it a little squirt spritzer here of some juice and see if it opens up. In fact, though, this kind of luber, luber spray all of these little thingies. And uh, we'll see. Not too hopeful, though. Yeah, I should get the paper schematic out by now. So we have 12 volts going to one side of this through a 5.6K resistor. Then the horizontal hold. And then the center tap goes up here to the AFC diodes. Well, this is kind of interesting because that capacitor there has to be dead shorted. Because if I clip on to one of the side leads where the 12 volts is coming in, I can adjust that voltage. But if I clip on to that center lead, to that pot, which now that should be the adjustable voltage. That voltage just stays at zero the whole time. So that capacitor has to be just dead shorted. That one right there, five micro puff. Okay, this is a little bit easier to read. We want C32. Where is that thing located? C32 is located right there. And that's, I believe that's right here. Can I zoom in a little bit? Not really, huh? It's uh, right. The hell is that noise? Did somebody get a wolf or something? I believe it's that right there. So what if we just execute that? This one right here. If we just rip it off the board. If I can... Two hands required. All right, I just stuck a screwdriver under it and broke one side of it off, uh, and that did get rid of the short to ground on the horizontal hold control. Let's see if we can control the horizontal hold. So here's window circle. I brought it in where it's dark and the birds don't chirp. And you can see how that's vertical hold. Ooh. Okay, no, no, no. That's horizontal hold. So you can see the horizontal is working now. Um, this is bad electrolytic capacitors. But at least I've gone through and I've diagnosed it and I know what's wrong. Uh, I have a good initial assessment. Yeah, I have a good initial assessment which is bad electrolytic capacitors, bad speaker, and duty, dirty tuner. God, I can't even talk today. Isn't that cool how that's got like that twerky, roto, twebulating thing? See how it's like going around in circles? And yeah, this is bad electrolytic capacitors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a put in an order on DigiKey. I gotta order some integrated circuits for an oscilloscope I'm fixing anyway. So I'm gonna uh, put in an order on DigiKey for these and I'll go over that a little bit. Yeah, you know, fixing this TV is is totally frivolous. It's, you know, as frivolous as putting 22-inch uh, rims on some mid-80s uh, Buick sedan, but it, sometimes frivolous stuff is fun, right? As long as it's cheap.
So, yeah, I could try putting a signal into this and see what it does. Let's see what else we got here. Looking good. That's our crosshatch. Might be able to adjust a little of this out, but again, bad capacitors. It's never going to work right with these old mid 60s Japanese electrolytics. These things are just not going to be happy. The yards on a really good line if it's far enough. Oh boy, the wind batted that thing yeah, right down the last it, 20 yards. It's into me. I cannot feel a thing. Golf never looked so much better. 15 in Poulter. Looks good, doesn't it? Cold filtered Subway sandwich. Alright, let's order some capacitors. I hate doing multi-part videos, but unfortunately in a case like this, I, I, you know, unless I wanted to pull all these capacitors out of old TV boards that I've saved, it's just way too time consuming. They're cheap to order Nichicon or Panasonic. They're like, I don't know, let's see. What I did is I went through the Sam's parts list. And basically all these electrolytics are 15 or 18 volts with the exception of a few. There's 150, but, and there's a few 50s. Uh, what I did is I broke it all down to this. This is the value in quantity and voltage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on DigiKey. I'm going to order Nichicon 85 centigrade radial electrolytics. And we'll take a look at that. Also, I correct it automatically up to the new numbers. Like, the, the TV doesn't have 2.2s. It has 2, 3, 5, 10, 20, 30. So I just automatically corrected it to the, you know, 2.3, 2.2, 3.3, 4.7, 10, 22, 33, 47, 100, 220, 330, and 470. I just automatically corrected and then there was an 800 in there, which is kind of interesting. I wonder where that is in the circuit. Digikey.com, you go to capacitors. Uh, this is a little bit aluminum uh, polymer capacitors, aluminum electrolytic capacitors. And then what you do is you start applying filters. So we are going to do Nichicon. On Nichicon, and then we're going to do. I'm not, we'll do 2.2 micro puffs, and we'll do let's see more filters. And yeah, this is going to take some time, so we'll do rated voltage, we'll do 25 volts, and bipolar polar. I guess we have to be politically correct and yeah I'd have to look at this so let's just 
there's a there's a lot here there's so we want through hole so we'll use that and then apply filters really there's only one usually you get what did I do wrong here okay let me clear the voltage that's not really that specific after all, remember this is just a frivolous TV. Okay, that gives us 489 remaining. Let's see what we get there. There we go, that looks more like it. 35 volts, 50 volts, 50 volts. So it looks like all we have are 35 volts. Now, and look at 4.6 cents. But that's, okay, so 23 cents. That's not bad. Um, and yeah, one thing, if you look at, usually, if you look at the temperature, right? So, look at the temperature here. Look at, so, the pulse current on the 105 centigrade is 16.5 milliamps at 120 hertz and the 85 centigrade is 23 milliamps at 120 hertz so generally I always look at this it's weird that the general purpose ones are much lower than the audio but I always tend to go for the highest uh, ripple current low frequency on these things rather than the the centigrade because I'm never gonna put 2,000 hours on this thing at 85 centigrade is no way okay so this is where it's gonna get a little difficult and it's better if you stick stay away from the odd values and like I said stick to your 22 33 47 you know I mean, they have the rounded off numbers, so I'm looking for an 800 microfarad here. And I, I don't know what the rounded off, maybe 820, what the common rounded off number. So I'm looking for something 800 microfarads at 16 volts. And I think it's through hole. So they have 350. They have 346, but let's see. Let's see if we can get a, a limit on our voltage here. So as you, so let's see. I need 16 volts. Let's see what that dropped it down to. 29. So 800, yeah, 16 volts. So let's have a look here at what they have for 820. Here we go. Wow, not bad. Uh, 88 cents. That's not too bad. Uh, let me look at this. I gotta see what form factor I want. You have to also look at this minimum quantity here. So this is a fairly uh, complex website to use. You know, it's there's a hell of a lot of choices and a lot of information, but you know, I, I'm in this 40 minutes already. So here's a good example. So I'm looking for a 3,000 at 25 volts. So you look at 3,000, you have three capacitors. We look at a 3,300, 3, come on. 3,300, we have 73 items. So what I'm talking about, about the typical... Um, more typical numbers and they're cheaper when you go well dollar twenty five this is the main filter though twenty dollars and twenty two cents and here's what I got so twenty dollars to do a full recap on the TV not too bad. All the electrolytic capacitors have been ordered. 
Next week I'm going to run the final Philco replacing the CRT video and then the following week we will recap this little cute black and white Sears uh, 1966 black and white solid state and we'll get this guy in good working order.